Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories that are happening right now. And topping the list for us tonight, your generosity and a cause that we think is worth all the support our community can provide. Helping volunteer groups provide final military honors at the funerals of fallen veterans. Now, as we partner with Operation Honor Guard for the annual Day of Giving Donation Drive, WAT6 on your side anchor Lori Tucker still at the phone bank. She's been there since 6 this morning. we got about 30 minutes to go, Lori. It's to go, and the phones have been ringing. I want to keep it that way because they just stopped just a second ago, but that's okay. We know we'll pick back up. Uh, the number to call, 865-582-4985. So many of you have been calling in, thank you, with $10, $20, $50, whatever you can give, it is making such a difference. We've also had our friends in the community, Knoxville Wholesale Furniture, with $10,000. Let's give them another round. And other donations from our friends that all together, we're all working together to make such a huge difference. I'm going to back up so you can just see our folks here on the phone lines. We have uh, folks who have stories to tell about why this telethon means so much to them. And let's tell you a little bit more about what Operation Honor Guard means to us. The Honor Guard is, well, there are six units in our area and the goal is to offer a last tribute of respect to their departed comrades by having the military funeral honors for any honorably discharged veteran without any regard to sex race color creed national origin or military rank and the most important thing here there is no cost for this service to the family honor guard are all volunteers and when it comes to their uniforms, their cost of transportation, all of the things that it takes to put on one of these moving military services, well, it's all come out of their pockets until we started partnering with them and got you and our community involved. It's making a difference. Again, we've got a little under 30 minutes to go. Give us a call or donate online at WATE.com. We'll be back. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Lori. We'll be checking back with Lori in just a little bit. Through the day, though, we've had our people out with several of the area's Honor Guard groups collecting donations at eight spots. We're talking from Greenville to Lenore City. WAT6 on your side, anchor reporter Molly O'Brien spent time in West Knoxville at the Pinnacle at Turkey Creek, where those donations have also been coming with words of thanks for those volunteer veterans. Well, cooler weather didn't really deter anyone from coming out and showing their support for this annual day of giving for Operation Honor Guard. Since 10 o'clock this morning, the East Tennessee Veterans Honor Guard has been at Pinnacle at Turkey Creek with traffic only picking up as the day goes on. I spoke with Stuart Hall, a member of the group who says it's been nice that people are recognizing their service and their mission. As a, a very active honor guard, um, twice this morning, I've had a family came by and said, you did my father's uh, service or you did my, one of them was a son, said uh, she, uh, that we had served her uh, son uh, funeral services. That really touches home with us and uh, the rest of my men and women that's out here, when they hear that, then to be recognized for what we did on a normal basis, but just to be out here meeting people, talking to people, yes, that puts icing on the cake there. This is the largest fundraiser of the year for Operation Honor Guard. Each donation only helping the group live out their mission. In Knoxville, Molly O'Brien, WATE 6 on your side. Molly, thank you, and that's just one of countless examples all around the area. You know, we've seen people driving up, donating money, sharing their appreciation for the Honor Guard effort and for the service of those Honor Guard members, veterans who give their own time and money, and it can't be lots of both to make sure their fellow service members receive the military honors they are due. Well, you still have time to give us a call. The number is 865-582-4985. Giving you a live look right now at our phone bank. We're taking those calls again until 7.30. Uh, we're answering calls. Let's make sure they stay answering calls. Let's keep them busy. You know, I spent some time over there today. We have multiple ways you can donate. Credit card, debit card. Uh, we can help you make out a check if that's what you need to do. And, of course, you can also donate at our website, WAT.com. And we'll check back a bit later in the newscast to see just how far we've come thanks to your generosity. 
Well, our Big 7 and 7 story list rolls on now with a, a mishap in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, prompting a road closure, a response from rangers, as well as from the National Park's Technical Rescue and Swift Water Rescue Team. Now, we learned just over two hours ago that rangers were called out to what's being described as a vehicle incident. That's the only specific bit we know right now, except for the location, Little River Road, just west of the sinks. That's the side of the closure affecting a stretch of road between Metcalf Bottoms and the towns and Y. Of course, we'll keep you posted as more answers come into the newsroom. Next on our list, a big scare at an East Tennessee school. The source of the concern, a starter pistol. And tonight, the student who allegedly brought it to school faces charges. The discovery happening yesterday at Clinch River Community School. As a matter of fact, according to the Anderson County School System, a school resource officer responded, removed the student from the school, and within five minutes was in police custody. Charges against the student include possession of a prohibited weapon and possession of a firearm on school property. By the way, if you're wondering, a starter pistol is used to signal the start of something like a, a track race or a competitive swimming event. Anderson County Director of Schools Dr. Tim Parrott in a news release this afternoon thanking school resource officer Adam Brown for a, quote, quick and professional response to this threat. Parrott's statement going on to say, while this incident is not something we ever want to have happen in our schools, we are extremely thankful for the way that our employees, as well as the Anderson County Sheriff's Office, responded to this threat. You know, not long ago, I actually had the chance, along with Good Morning Tennessee anchor Allison Smith, to sit down with Dr. Parrott and other leaders from Anderson County Schools, plus Sheriff Russell Barker, as they walked us through the district's plan for protecting students and staff from tools to spot and respond to threats to cyberbullying, to a, a way teachers can raise the alarm within seconds if something goes wrong in their classroom. We posted that hour-long safety in our schools discussion to our website so you can check it out at wate.com. Our next big story tonight is seven grant money to protect Jewish institutions in Knox County. And this comes as Israel battles to wipe out the terrorist group Hamas after last month's surprise attacks on Israeli border communities. Israel hitting back with strikes in Gaza, the military campaign drawing a spectrum of reactions from full-throttled support to outright condemnation over conditions for Palestinians, along with blame volley back and forth for civilian deaths. Now, even before this flare-up of violence in the Middle East, back here in Tennessee, advocacy groups and law enforcement were seeing a spike in hate messages directed at Jewish people. Just this week, we showed you anti-Semitic flyers strewn around a West Knox community neighborhood. Similar flyers turned up over the summer in Middle Tennessee. Now, Jewish groups across the state began advocating years ago for help with security measures. The help coming today as some of your state lawmakers revealed a grant money coming to four Knoxville Jewish groups and institutions. The Knoxville Jewish Alliance, Heska Amuna Synagogue, Knoxville Jewish Day School, and Temple Bethel to pay for private security. Nobody could have foreseen the events of October 7th. Absolutely nobody. And now the astronomical rise in anti-Semitism is, is quite literally debilitating to the Jewish community in Knoxville, Tennessee. I mean, people are scared to go to their houses of worship. The grant monies allow us to go to our houses of worship, allow our preschool parents to drop off their kids with security officers that keep an, keep an eye out for our safety and it adds another sense of security for our community. Now, State Senator Richard Briggs was there as well, sharing a personal connection. He told us how his father, as a soldier in World War II, was among the first Americans to enter the Dachau prison camps in Germany, an event, the senator says, which affected his father for the rest of his life. Our next big story for you tonight, neighbors shocked by a deadly shooting. The Knox County Sheriff's Office investigating with one person dead, another in custody. We brought you this uh, to you first as breaking news. This was last night at 11 o'clock with first responders getting the call about people hearing shots fired on Old Rutledge Pike in the mascot community. This was around 745 in the evening. Well, today we followed up visiting the area and speaking with neighbors, surprised at a disturbance in an area where the people aren't really used to this sort of thing. It's a quiet place. I, I love the place. My own daughter lives uh, on the next road back. My daughter called me about what happened and I looked out the, the door and seen that the police was up there and they was still up there when I went to bed at 10 o'clock. We were trick-or-treating in the um, subdivision like right down the road like right there and I've, I'm really surprised that we didn't hear anything because when we got back home that's when we seen like you know 
fire truck and like, I don't know how many police cars, like it was crazy down there. Now the names of the victim and suspect have not yet been released. A big promotion as our Big 7 story list rolls on. University of Tennessee Police Department looking within its own ranks for its new chief, promoting Sean Patterson to the job as of today. UTPD says Patterson has been with them since 2020. Before that, he spent more than 21 years with the New York City Police Department. He's also a retired Navy Chief Petty Officer. Patterson is filling the job as Chief Troy Lane now becomes UT's Associate Vice Chancellor of Public Safety. And we wrap up the Big 7 list with what comes after Halloween. From the spooky season, we now go to the holiday season. Dollywood Smoky Mountain Christmas event is just about here. Starting on Saturday, there will be more than 6 million lights sparkling throughout the park and nightly drone shows as well. And you can expect holiday performances, parades, uh, seasonal food options. Dollywood's Christmas event runs November 4th through January 6th. By the way, 2024 season passes just went on sale for Dollywood. Early bird pricing only available until December 3rd. And if you buy it now, we understand you can use the passes starting this Saturday.